Hi, Cassie and Erica. I just want to explain the vendor uh, bill approval uh, workflow. And you can see here that we have the bill validation. So this is when uh, the AP role is checking to see if uh, if, every, if there's any discrepancies, essentially, right? And they can hit save, and they, they can come back and edit it. And it only moves on to the next step of the process um, after the submit for approvals button is pushed. You can see here, I, had, I added the submit for approvals button here. So once it's pushed, it goes to pending approval. Right, and so you can see it's, it's pushed based off the submit for approvals. And then we go to the pending approval and you can see here that they have a approve button um, and the approve, but the approve button was only gonna show up for the county manager, the controller, the senior accountant and the administrator, right? And they have the same for the reject button and it was only gonna show up for the county manager, controller, senior account administrator. And I also have lock records. so. The person can only approve or reject the bill. They cannot um, edit anything, right? They, if they wanted to edit, they're going to have to reject it, and they will get notified, right? If it is rejected, you can see it's going to be. It, it goes into the rejected state based off the rejected bill being pushed. And the rejected state, you can see that the approval status has changed to rejected. That the accounts payable employee is emailed. Um, which is different than the IEI requester employee, and that um, the button for resubmit for approvals is pushed. Once the resubmit for approvals button is pushed, it will go back into the pending approval workflow queue. And then um, once it's in here, it can be pressed approve, and then the approve button will change to approve, and it will be ready to be paid. Um, I'm going to go give a quick example run through of this process in the next video.